Car 2 is quite often called the baby Ferrari, sometimes even the poor man's Ferrari, which might even be a more appropriate term, but a more appropriate term might be, no, no, it's not any of those. Welcome back, big dreamers. I'm Dan Sam. This is Lithe Racing. Today, we're going to be talking about JDM versus Italian. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you'll know that we pretty much focus on Japanese cars, especially mid-engine Japanese cars, which are going to be a good comparison for what we have in front of us today. But your little JDM fanboy found himself in the heart of Italy, actually Modena, the home of Enzo Ferrari. I am. I am. Italian cars, synonymous with performance at a high price tag. Japanese cars, synonymous with affordability and longevity. Every once in a while, those two categories converge. While there are commonalities in between the rear wheel drive mid-engine layout, that might be where the commonalities stop. Looking at the layout, the differences only become more exaggerated. Differences in cooling systems, as well as the engine being offset to the side of the car in the engine bay, make dramatic differences in handling as well as what the capabilities of loading packages might be. Looking at the chassis, we can already see some dramatic differences. While the MR2 is built in a more general nature, you can tell that the Ferrari is a more purpose-built animal. So 
Suspension might be the most extreme example of the differences in between some of these Italian cars, especially on the high end like Ferrari, versus some of these more economic mid-engine ships like the MR2. Power plants, we again see more differences than similarities. From Ferrari's brutal approach of packing a V8 turbocharged engine into almost some of the lightest chassis in the world at the time, to Toyota's ingenuitive creative approach of supercharged four cylinders and turbocharged four cylinders, again creates stark contrasts in between the minds of the Italian engineers versus the minds of the Japanese engineers. Younger, I was gifted with the experience of driving a white F40 about 178 feet. Well, it was only enough time to let out the clutch and observe all the gauges that mounted upon the dash there, um, done so by Ferrari. I mean, I, I remember looking down and seeing one that read rear diff temperature. It gave me a dramatic understanding of the differences in the engineers' minds in between Italians and Japanese. Well, I wish I could go back and live that memory 10 times over and have a F40 of my own. This might actually be a great way of capturing that feeling and that exoticness, almost a novelty with a car that you haven't experienced in a while. I think the MR2 actually checks a lot of those boxes for us and that's why we might call it the poor man's Ferrari. Even though there are stark contrasting differences in between the two of them, design, layout, power plant, you name it. I think we can all walk away appreciating what they had in mind for both of these cars. And with only a little bit of modification on the Japanese end of things, especially in this mid-engine realm, I think you can capture a lot of that. I'm Dan Sam, this has been Live Racing. If you made it this far, definitely give me a subscribe. Until then, we'll catch you on the next one. Please keep those wrenches turning.